What is up guys and here we are back with another game. This one is gonna be simple but yet fun to play. Now notice here we have this weird looking thing that's catching these fruits and I'm not supposed to catch the bomb. I almost tried to catch it but hey, every time I catch something you will see that while well, my score increases and when I catch the bomb, bam, we explode and the game restarts. Now, what I want to say is, now this game is fairly simple but yet useful especially for people just learning to create games and whatnot now I did not add some fancy menus did not add some fancy I don't know effects or whatnot you can add that on your own you can search on the internet for I don't know for example some audio effects that you can add when you pick up something but hey I do not care okay I do not care so, just kidding man, I'm gonna go now and create a new project so that we can create this game. So I'm gonna go file and new project and this one I am gonna name Fruit Eater, which is very creative, very awesome, very cool. So I'm gonna name it Fruit, it's Fruit, Fruit Eat, Fruit Eater and I am gonna see where we are gonna save it. So this is a tester, I'm not gonna save it in the tester, but I'm gonna save it here into the project. So, what am I typing? This keyboard is German keyboard because this laptop is from Germany, so it's a German keyboard, and I do not know to type on a German keyboard. So, 2D, fruit eater, location, I'm gonna disable Unity Analytics because I don't need it, I'm gonna click create project. And uh, bam, let's just wait for the project and here we are. So first things first, you're gonna go into game here and you are gonna change the scene to 480 by 800. Now I talked about it in some of the previous tutorials. If you don't have here 480 by 800, you can click on the plus button and then here add a custom resolution. This label here will be the name of that resolution. So I usually put the resolution itself but you can name it however you want it. And you can use this fixed resolution. So here you can type 480 by 800 and then click OK and it will create that resolution. Then you can use it here in your game tab. So as always, I am gonna first create a folder. I'm gonna name this one scenes and I'm gonna hold command and press S so that this right here pops up. You can either go here under file and click on save scene and you can also hold command press s on windows it's control plus s to save the scene and i'm gonna name this one gameplay and i'm gonna save it into the scenes folder and click save simple as that and now i'm gonna click create folder and these are gonna be the sprites and i'm gonna double click in the sprites folder and in my finder bam here i am gonna open that well open this folder so that i can import these Anyways, I am only gonna use this one, BG, this one right here. But everything that you see here will be provided to you for download under this lecture. So link is in the description. Everything here, I will provide these two backgrounds, even these backgrounds here. You will have these buttons, all of them. Go crazy with them. You can use them in your own games, I don't care. And uh, as I said, just going back here, character, this is our player, these are the fruits. I'm gonna import all of these fruits. I'm gonna import the player. I am gonna import only one button, even though I don't need it. I did not create a menu in this game. So I did not create a menu, I do not need it. And I only need this BG, so this is what I need. Only these, the player, the BG, these fruits, and we are good to go. But as I said, everything here, because I'm a nice person, I am gonna provide to you all of these, well, assets or, or these drawings that you can use in whatever you want to use in. So now what we can do is we can go back here in the scene. I am simply going to drag and drop our well BG right here in the scene and bam this is what we see. Now you are wondering what's wrong here. Well the problem is that we need to take our camera and here for the size in the inspector panel we have something called size which is the orthographic size of the camera. So I'm gonna set it at four, which will resize the camera to be exactly as the width and the height of our background. So now the camera covers everything. And I'm gonna put the player here. 
let's just move the player downwards a little bit and uh, we also need to resize our player so his scale is gonna be at 0 0.8 0 0.8 for the x and for the y and uh, yeah this is I'm pretty satisfied where the player is or we can put him maybe at 3.5 instead of 5.5 but it is good to go so the first thing that I want to do is move the player for that we need a folder called scripts scripts like this and uh, here I'm gonna create a script which I'm gonna call player movement and I am gonna put it here under player and now we have the player movement script on the player but in order to move the player we do need to add a box collider to the player which is gonna be a trigger and we need to add a rigid body 2d now one problem that we have here is that if we run the game the player is gonna fall down BAM so we do need to take the rigid body 2d and click this is kinematic what that means is is kinematic will make the game object not affected by gravity but other forces can manipulate it so you can use things like add force and manipulate the velocity and whatnot but the gravity will not affect the player so if I hit run now we see that the player is not affected by gravity we can well achieve the same effect if we take the gravity scale and put it on zero and run the game again we see that the gravity is not affecting the player but as soon as I add one here BAM that player is gonna fall down like a little I don't want to say it I use that word in my gameplay tutorials or gameplay walkthroughs so I'm gonna leave it out of the tutorials section because I'm a good kid so now that we have the script and the rigid body and whatnot attached I am gonna click on this gear icon near the player script that is player movement and I'm gonna click this move down which is gonna move it down on the hierarchy again move down on the hierarchy and before you even ask because I got these types of questions so I saw you moving the script here in the inspector panel does that have something to do with performance or no I just like it that way I like my scripts to be below any other component that I attach on a game object with other components I mean such as box colliders rigid bodies, animators, audio players and whatnot, I like my scripts to be at the bottom. So I don't like my scripts to be for example above the box collider. This is just me. Maybe you like them so I do not. That's why I move them down. So now in order to move the player I am simply gonna double click on the script and open it in Mono Develop. and uh, quickly let me just tag the class and if you are wondering why am I tagging classes every now and so well sometimes this can happen so you write your code and you're not following and for example move and you type something like this and bam you did not finish the call on here so see or excuse me the the curly bracket you did not finish it here if I go here now this is the problem that you're gonna get did I save this? No, it's not saved. So now this is the problem that you're gonna get, parsing error. In 99% of the cases when you see this parsing error, it's because you did not end the curly bracket statement. And notice what happens. If you wanna locate that problem, double click here, but it sends you here. So you're like, oh, what is going on? I did like you did in the video, but it's not working. What's the problem? And well, this is the problem. You did not add the semicolon. So okay, why am I saying semicolon? Did not add the curly bracket. So now when you add the curly bracket, everything is okay. But what is the, what's the, how can, the wisdom. So what's the wisdom behind this tagging the class? Well, now if I tag the class and I go back here, I'm 100% sure that this is the end of the class. So it must be another way. So it's not this one. This curly bracket is not a problem because this is the end of the class. And that's why I know that probably the next one above is causing the problem and I need to end it. That's the reason why am I ta tagging the class. So that mystery is solved. Moving forward, what we need to do is I'm going to go here and create a private float speed because we need a speed to move the player which is going to be equal to 10 now this we can alter we can change it you can even put it to be public and then change it here in your inspector panel when you select the player and uh, after this 
we do need to get a reference to a rigid body. So here I'm going to say private rigid body 2D, which I'm always going to call my body because it's my body. Touch my body. So yeah. And uh, change the start to awake. Now, the difference between the two, I did mention this in previous videos, and people ask me, okay, you say and you talk, but you did not explain what's the difference between awake and start. Okay, awake is the first function that will be called when we run our game. The first function after it will be called start, but not quite, because we have one more function which is called void on enable. And if you watch tutorials about delegates and delegation, you know that we have on enable and on disable. So here I'm going to also type void on disable. Now, after awake is called, and awake is the recommended function to initialize everything that you have to initialize in your game because it's called early in the game before the game even starts and it does not take performance. You should initialize everything inside of awake. After awake it's called, on enable is called. That's the second function that's being called after our game starts. And finally, the third function is gonna be start that is called after, well, our game starts. On disable is gonna be called when we deactivate the game object. So when we type, for example, game object set active to false, well, when this executes, this is the function it's gonna be called. Also, when a game object is destroyed, on disable is called. Now, on enable and on disable are good for delegation. So here you subscribe to an event and here unsubscribe, which I talked about in, well, my delegates tutorial. So now moving forward, glad that we have this covered. So now we know what is awake and what is start. In the awake function, I am gonna type here, my body is equal to get component and I'm gonna get the rigid body 2D component from my body not from my body, but from the game object, which is, well, my body, the rigid body. And now in our update function, and we are gonna remove the star because we do not need it, in the update function, which is called once per frame. So every frame, the, fun the update function is gonna be called. We are gonna use vector two and velocity in order to move, well, our body or to move the player. So here I am gonna say vector two, velocity, so vel, shirt for velocity, is equal to my body, dot velocity. So we are getting the velocity, which is the current velocity of the body. And I'm gonna say velocity dot x is equal to input dot get axis. And for the axis, I am gonna input here, horizontal, hori, horizontal and I am simply going to multiply that by speed and lastly we are going to simply say my body dot velocity is equal to velocity and we're good to go and we can also put this in the fixed update because fixed update the difference between update and fixed update is that update so just update without this fixed is called every frame so if we have 60 frames in a single second this function will be called 60 times but fixed update is gonna be called every couple of frames. So for example, if we have 60 frames in a second, fixed update is gonna be called every third or fourth frame in that second. So on fourth frame, this will be called on eight, on 12, on 16, 20, so on and so forth up to 60. And if you want to manipulate the physics system or the rigid body, it is rec recommended to do that in the fixed update instead of the update itself. And now let me explain what is going on. So vector two velocity here, I'm just naming it velocity because we are getting the velocity from the body. And now we are saying velocity.x is equal to input dot get axis horizontal multiplied by speed. Now what is going on here? Well, this get axis horizontal is gonna give us it is going to give us a number between minus one and one. And let me demonstrate that. So if I take this input get axis horizontal, I am going to comment everything what's here so that I don't print it out. And here I'm going to say or execute it, update. And in the update, I'm simply going to say print 
and I am gonna say the value is plus input get access horizontal. If I go back here and try to run this, now we are gonna see in our console the number. So notice now I'm holding the left, notice the number. It went slowly from zero up to negative one. Notice now it negative 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, so on and so forth. While I'm holding left side, it was gonna be equal to one. And notice now I'm going to the right side, it is printing 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, up to one. So it is gonna go slowly well, not that slow, but it is gonna go slowly from zero up to one if we press the right button or the right arrow or the dub or the D key. It is gonna go from zero up to one. So it's gonna be like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, up to one. And when we plus press the left arrow or A, it's gonna be from zero up to negative one. And it's gonna go slowly. So negative 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, up to negative one. And we are multiplying that number with the speed, which is this one right here. This is the speed. We are multiplying that number and assigning it to our velocity x. And after that, assigning that back to our body's velocity. So this is what we are doing. Essentially, that will move our player left and right. So let's check that out. If I run the game now and move the player left and right, notice how he is moving left and right. So this works even if I press A and D, now I'm pressing A and D, because this get axis is gonna get the horizontal axis of our press. For the horizontal, that means X axis, moving on the X. So A and D can move the character left and right, and left and right arrow key can move the char character left and right, which is the X axis horizontal. If we use this vertical, so vertical, it will get the input for the Y axis, which is W and S on the keyboard and up and down arrow keys. So yeah, this is what we are essentially doing here, which enables us to move the player left and right. Uh, this is an introduction. I don't even know what I just said, but you don't guys even care. You're just scared to see the game and play it and whatnot. But this was just an introduction to the game, importing the assets and uh, while well, moving the player left and right. One problem we have here is that our player can go out of bounds. Notice here the player is off and we don't want that. So we are going to start fixing these issues in the next video. So I will see you guys then take care.